Okay, welcome everybody to number 101 of the Circle of Wine Writers Let's Talk About Sessions. And today we're going to talk about sustainability in drought conditions. I'd like to extend a welcome to those people who haven't attended any of these uh, sessions before, but obviously to our members as well who have attended a number of them. Um, if this is the first time, just to introduce the Circle of Wine Writers was founded in 1960 in the UK and today comprises of around 260 members around the world. 50% are in the UK um, and they comprise of wine writers, broadcasters, educators and other professional communicators. Uh, if you'd like to find more information about the Circle, it is on our website and you can also go there to uh, make an online application. Uh, if you'd like to join any of these sessions in the future and you're not on our mailing list, then please do let us know and we can add you to that. All I can do now is I can hand over to Liz Saggies, who's the committee member who's been organising this event. And over to you, Liz. Hello, everyone. And thank you all for joining what we think should be a very interesting and topical session because so many areas of the world, wine growing areas of the world now are suffering from lack of water. Uh, our two presenters are both French in origin. Um, Gérald Gabillet is the technical director of Cheval des Andes, which is the Argentinian expression of Cheval Blanc in Bordeaux. Gérald comes from Bordeaux and um, after studying at the uh, university there, he's um, uh, been wor he's worked in a number of major uh, Bordeaux chateaus, including uh, before joining uh, this new project uh, in Argentina. He was um, deputy technical director of Chateau Angelus. Um, he's, it's a fascinating project. Uh, it's uh, very much uh, in collaboration with Chateau Cheval, Cheval Blanc, but it's different conditions. And Gérald will explain how he's coping with something which is, is quite different from Bordeaux. Our other presenter, is Jean-Marc Lafarge, who comes from further south in France. He was born in Perpignan, and he spent much of his working life in the south of France. He studied at Montpellier, uh, but he has also worked um, all um, throughout France and in South Africa. And um, he's uh, also had lots of contact with Chilean wineries. Um, his um, major winemaking role uh, before setting up his own business was at as chief winemaker at the big French group, Southern French group of Francailleur. Uh, in 1995, he decided to um, go it alone and establish his own business, including uh, Domaine Lafarge. Uh, he's got projects uh, apart from Lafarge with uh, Spain, uh, Chile, uh, elsewhere in France, including Corsica. And he's, over the last few years, taken pictures particular interest in research and development uh, with water for vineyards. But without further ado, uh, Gérald is going to speak first. So over to you, Gérald. Okay, um, thank you. Very happy and proud to be here today. So you will see my English is not perfect, but uh, I, uh, I will try to, to be uh, clear and uh, and uh, understandable. So um, I will I will share my screen now. Uh, this one, I think you will have it. Yes, I think so. And normally, it's okay. So um, I hope you 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 can uh, see my my screen. Um, First of all, I, I, I would like to to to, to um, talk uh, in few words about this project, and, and very shortly because the, uh, the 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 main topic today it is uh, uh, the challenge of uh, drought conditions, and of course uh, in Argentina and in Mendoza it's clearly a, a big challenge because we are uh, in a desert, in semi-desert. So um, you will see that. Uh, of course, uh, every vintage is, is a challenge. So uh, just uh, to help you to locate the um, located, uh, locating uh, Mendoza, we are in South America at the feet of the Andes, 
Um, I don't know if you see my my uh, my cursor, but uh, uh, you have all the co uh, uh, the endes who are starting here and finishing at the at the south of South America, of course. And uh, Mendoza is clearly uh, at the south uh, at the feet of the Andes, and we are in altitude. Um, I'm coming from Bordeaux, uh, and our, our big brother Plateau Cheval Blanc, uh, managing by Pierre Morton and, and today by Pierre Olivier Coué. Um, Pierre is still the, pre the president of Chateau Cheval Blanc, and uh, the general manager now is Pierre Olivier Coué, the, the ex technical director. Um, so clearly, it's a project which uh, has a uh, 25 years old. Um, it's a young project at the end when we compare with all French uh, uh, the history in France and and, and Europe uh, uh, history in the wine industry. Um, so it's uh, it's quite new. And of course, uh, we had to adapt ourselves and to understood uh, very quickly where we were. We were. So um, Pierre, uh, thanks to the help uh, of uh, Roberto della Mota, so they have created the Cheval des Andes uh, together. Uh, Roberto is, is a Mendocino, Mendocino uh, agronomist and, uh, and uh, analogist. He has studied in Montpellier. And uh, he, 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 he met Pierre Loton in 1998, and they, and they decided to create Cheval des Andes in 1999. So step by step, Cheval des Andes uh, has grown, and, uh, and Cheval des Andes, and, and we insist a lot uh, on that uh, here in Argentina, because it is a bit a new concept, it's a Bordeaux concept. Uh, Cheval des Andes is, is a growth. Uh, we have two vineyards. Uh, our main vineyard is in Las Compuertas, uh, we have 32 hectares, and we have at the south, in the famous and, and more famous now, Valle de Uco, we have 15 hectares there at 80 kilometers uh, at, uh, far uh, on the south. So, to give you a bit of context about the uh, hydric uh, and, 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 and uh, climatic conditions of uh, where we are, so um, I forgot just one data. Uh, we are in altitude. We are our two vineyards are more are at more than one thousand meters. Um, we have only uh, two hundred three hundred millimeters uh, of rainfall per year, so we could consider that it is a, a semi-desertic region. And uh, we have only of all the Mendoza province you can see on the uh, the brown here. Uh, we have only 3% of the surface which is cultivated. So we are at the feet of the Andes, we are in altitude, we have a continental climate, and of course, with uh, a bit the, the Andes who are, block, uh, who are blocking all the, the climatic depression from the Pacific Ocean, we have less than 40% of humidity, which is very dry uh, and very extreme conditions. And of course, we have often some uh, some winds, strong winds, coming from the the mountains, uh, and dry winds, very warm winds, which called here uh, we have a local name. Uh, this wind is called the sonda, uh, which, uh, um, as you can say that, uh, um, which is which which is a very very dry wind, and so of course. Uh, which dried, dry, dry a lot the hair uh, here in Mendoza. And of course, how we have these mountains uh, which are protecting uh, our province, our region, we have lots of uh, sunny days. We have more than 300 sunny days per, day, per year, which is, um, you could imagine, very, very special. And, and, and for someone who, who, who comes from Bordeaux, <laughs> uh, it's a big change. Uh, but of course, when uh, technically we are talking about sunny days, we are talking about um, photosynthesis. We are talking about all uh, these uh, uh, technical and, and uh, uh, physiological uh, factor uh, which are uh, participating of the, the growing of the plant and has an impact on the cycle, physiological cycle of the vine. So to give you a bit um, the context, Mendoza is a semi-desert. So with only 200 millimeters 
300 millimeters per year, uh, we wouldn't be able to cultivate uh, nothing uh, because Mendoza is a bit an oasis. And why Mendoza is an oasis? Uh, and it's not new. Uh, at the end, of the Incas has understood that they could use the snow melt from the Andes uh, and to orientate uh, this snow melt and so this water uh, to uh, from the mountains to the valley uh, and to use it to cultivate and of course uh, to produce some vegetables and uh, and step by step uh, and since the 15th century uh, some uh, some uh, grapes and so some wines. So it's a clearly a, a specific a specific uh, way of uh, cultivation. Um, so I I I I I show you on this uh, on this uh, slide uh, a bit, uh, and you can see on the map on on the right that uh, all the left part are the Andes, and on the Andes we have some uh, reservoirs. And you have this one is one of the, of the biggest uh, here in Mendoza. It is called Dique Potrerios. It's a, it's a dam, uh, and from this uh, this dam, um, we have some uh, water channels which permits to irrigate the valley. And where we are, our main uh, vineyard here in Las Compuertas, uh, you can see how a bit the the water is orientated. And here, clearly, on this point. You have another small dam which orientate uh, uh, the uh, new channels which permits to irrigate this uh, this urbanization and this uh, agriculture uh, area so it's a very specific and uh, and uh, we we could consider that this water from the snow melt are a bit the rainfalls which uh, never arrived to uh, and which are blocked by the Andes. And if we we didn't have uh, we wouldn't have this uh, this endless, we would have these rainfalls in Mendoza. So naturally, so of course uh, here you have several uh, Rio and Rio Mendoza is uh, this one on 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 the map on the right, uh, right side. We have Rio Tunuyan, Rio Diamante, and all these Rio at the end uh, are orientated, and uh, we have some reservoir. Uh, which permits them to use it on the valley to cultivate and to share with the, 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 the population. So, of course, we have uh, an administration uh, and a strict who, who strictly uh, regulate a bit the, uh, the, uh, the the use of uh, of water, um, and of course they have order a bit uh, who or which. Uh, of source and, and who is the first the priority uh, in this using of water? So first you have on the left part uh, the human consumption it is the priority, then the agriculture, then of course the energy so to use water to produce electricity and and everything, uh, industrial uh, all the, the the industry of, of the area, and of course recreation it's a bit uh, using water for. Uh, your 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 grass or, or some parks in a, in the city, so it's a bit of the way uh, the administration is regulating, uh, and 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 clearly agriculture is a, a, an important uh, um, uh, and and one of the priority of uh, the Mendoza government uh, in using the water, and so it's quite. Uh, important for us because viticulture and not only viticulture, we have lots of uh, arboriculture, we have lots of uh, uh, producer of vegetables here in the Mendoza is called is a bit the, the pepiniere uh, or the, uh, the maraiche of uh, a big part for, for a big part of Argentina and South America. So, of course, with 200 and 300 millimeters, we have to ir irrigate and so we use this uh, snow melt uh, and we use that the, the water that the, the administration and the rights of water that the administration the local administration uh, gives us uh, and so we have historically uh, a way of irrigation uh, not very efficient uh, and it's still the main irrigation here in Mendoza because uh, you need to, to, to do some investments 
So we call it the fluid irrigation. It's like an inundation of your of your your lands, uh, and uh, and of course um, it's not very efficient because you could consider that you are you, you could have a lose of water, um, and I will show you before. Uh, for example, when the, the water is coming uh, here on the river and uh, and here on, on, on this part of in this area, for example, in Ascomportas, we haven't all the channels um, isolated or, uh, as you can say, that a, uh, impermeable. So I don't know if you understand that, but uh, now step by step, they are doing some investments, the administration, to uh, have some uh, uh, cement uh, channels and not just the land, uh, and you could lose a lot of water um, before. So we we have this fluid irrigation, and it is the same in our vineyards. Um, so we had um, historically when we have started this project, we had one hundred percent of our vineyards with fluid irrigation. And you will see uh, the chronograma step by step. We have succeeded to uh, invest uh, to uh, at the end have one hundred percent. So you, you could see clearly that you have a difference of efficiency and in efficiency you have different, uh, of course, uh, parameters. You have the distribution. So what I, I showed you just before uh, with uh, the loss during the uh, the way of water uh, to our vineyards from the mountains to our vineyards. Then you have the application. And here with these two pictures, we have clearly the, the, the two representations of, of the two way of application that we have in our vineyards. Eh? You could have a um some uh, some uh, pipes uh, inside the soil you have different way uh, but uh, clearly it's not uh, we have decided to to have uh, um, this type of uh, dripping irrigation and of course you have uh, the efficiency of the infiltration because uh, when your land is saturated or your soil is saturated on water you have no more uh, infiltration so clearly you have to uh, consider the uh, we say in uh, the flow of water or the volume of water you will uh, give to uh, to your 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 land uh, in function of the of the of the, the flow you had before. What we have um, calculated for these last years, after several uh, seasons, uh, step by step, we have more and more data to be to consider it, but we save we have saved around 60% of water changing uh, our way of irrigation, which is uh, an amount of water, a crazy amount of water that we, we have succeeded to save. So we hope that in the future, uh, step by step people, uh, because clearly it's one of the key points of the sustainability here in Mendoza uh, and 60% 60, 60 of water is it's something crazy when we, we, we can read this, uh, this number. So, um, of course, we uh, uh, we have to consider where we are, what are the tools. Uh, so every every year we have to uh, revise a bit how to to use the water that the, the administration give us, uh, and to optimize this. It is a clearly uh the objective we we don't want to waste water we want to use water at the best with our objectives uh the objectives we have to produce an iconic wine here in argentina uh and and not uh, wasting water just uh, uh, because we have uh, our rights and often it is the case uh, uh, here and so clearly it's not very sustainable so um, to help us, because we are coming from Bordeaux, we have not lots of knowledge about uh, the hydro stress, because it is clearly the key point here in Mendoza. Uh, since 2015, we are working with a, a, a viticulturist, a, consult a viticulture consultant called Xavier Chonet. He's a, 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 a specialist and, and, and very known in, in Napa Valley, for example. Uh, and Xavier Chonet has uh, helped us a lot. Uh, in understanding how to use this water and um, and what were the best tools uh, to be uh, more precise and more sustainable. 
So Xavier uh, gave us a bit some uh, some priority at the beginning, and so clearly it was to step by step and and and, and uh, the fastest fastest as possible to um, invest in dripping irrigation. And for that, we needed to um, to invest in reservoir, in artificial lake where we could cap uh, capture water and then use it uh, with uh, thanks to to bombs, uh, to pumps, sorry, um, to use the dripping irrigation and to irrigate really when the, the, the vine uh, needed water during this physiological cycle. So, of course, from when you are coming from Bordeaux, but now we have seen, we have some vintages and we had some vintages historically with some, a bit of, uh, of dryness and, uh, but for example, 2022 in Bordeaux, it was clearly uh, some similar conditions we had in Mendoza, uh, not as extreme, but uh, um, Chateau Chevalon, for example, they, 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 they use their Mendoza experience for uh, managing the, their vineyard in 2022 and, 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 and for taking some uh, strong decision for the, the, the picking and uh, not uh, waiting for uh, an unbalanced and, uh, and, uh, and cooked uh, uh, grapes. So Xavier Chonet comes in 2015, and uh, and of course, uh, and you can read it on at the bottom. Uh, it de it depends, of course, of your objectives. Um, we are growth, so we use only own grapes. Uh, in Mendoza, is is not a uh, classic. Often we have two uh, worlds. We could say that uh, grapes producers and wineries. A bit the, the champagne model, a bit or of the, the, the Napa model. So we uh, we had to choose uh, the, and, and step by step, it has been several, several years, we have started to restructurate our vineyards. And so we are searching, of course, some loose stock who are not uh, consuming too much water. Uh, the grape varieties, we have a difference. For example, Malbec, uh, we say uh, uh, technically, or uh, but it's more, plastic than the Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. So you have to uh, adapt uh, and to choose the grape varieties and the material, but which is the most adapted to, to the era. Um, then, of course, you have to uh, choose the, and, and thanks to the help of Xavier Chonet, uh, we have uh, chosen uh, uh, some dripping uh, tools, dripping irrigation tools, uh, which we are considering, we were considering that they were not uh, consuming too much water, and we have to do lots of measurements. We have to observe a lot, and uh, and we have now three agronomists for only forty-seven hectares who are every day uh, observing and uh, interpreting and communicating with Xavier to uh, do to using at the best water and to uh, adapt the. Um, the different um, ta tasks in the vineyard for the best management and to make a great uh, great grapes. So this it is a, of course we have uh, one of our agronomists who is in charge of the research and development. We have started lots of uh, studies uh, to understand better about uh, about this aspect too, uh, and it's never finished. So we try to to be uh, better and better in in this uh, in this part to be more and more sustainable with the objective to make uh, great quality of grapes. This it is, of course, I think the, the, the objective of the ma major of, uh, of the wineries and, the, and the, the wine estates, but clearly it's uh, very important for the future. Here it suggests the chronogramma, uh, how Chevalaisand step by step has, uh, has done and, and, and has made, uh, has built some, uh, some uh, reservoirs um, to uh, have the capacity to capture water uh, and to be able to see, to, to use um, this water, uh, how we could consider how um, it could be, uh, we are simulating some rainfalls at the end. And it is on, what, on that that Xavier Chonet is helping us a lot. At the end, we have now the tools to simulate the, the, the rainfalls at the best moment during the, the physiological cycle of the vine. And it's helped us a lot 
uh, and it's why we have done this investment because clearly uh, often the administration give you access to water because we are sorry I don't tell you but we depend on this administration and they gave us they give us water uh, and we are sharing water with the other vineyards so uh, we have uh, some tours of water uh, and so sometimes they give they, they give us water when we we needn't in the vineyard so we don't want to 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 lose it and so we capture it and really we use it and thanks to the dripping irrigation at the at the right moment uh, during the, the, the cycle of uh, physiological cycle of the vines. Um, so you can see that we have built three reservoirs uh, in uh, in uh, in five years and four or five years, which is a, a which are big investment. And uh, step by step, when we were during maybe uh, seventeen years, uh, one hundred percent fully irrigations. Now uh, in twenty twenty four, we will we will have one hundred percent of our vineyard with drip irrigation. So you could consider it that we economize 60% of our water. And this water, what we will economize, will be for over uh, vineyards or over lands, and which permits to, uh, for other um, viticulturists maybe, who have a lack of water to use it uh, for them. Uh, a last part, because I, I know that uh, my time is, uh, uh, there is a, an account of time. <laughs> Um, of course, with a big brother uh, uh, as Cheval Blanc, um, in parallel, uh, of course, with uh, using water was a priority, but we wanted to uh, uh, understand where we are and to uh, adapt uh, the Cheval Blanc philosophy. So clearly, uh, our objective here, and, and I'm, sure, I'm convinced you have a uh, uh, listen, that uh, in Cheval Blanc, they have started a big project, a, a big agroecological agro project uh, um, for now seven years. Uh, and uh, so we, are, we, we wanted to, uh, to try to understand how we could adapt it. Um, at, the, at the beginning, we were a bit scared because, uh, of course, uh, the water topic uh, in Madosa is, a, is a, a key point. And so to have some cover crops, uh, maybe it was a bit dangerous, but so we have done lots of experimentations about that. And at the end, we have seen that when you have a co cover crops, and, uh, you have on the uh, more humidity on the, on the first centimeters in, in, in our soils. So I have lots of uh, data about that. And if you want uh, uh, in private, uh, we could give you uh, more data, but uh, I, want, I want it to be more um, efficient and, and, and shorter. Uh, so we have uh, we have now uh, and since uh, uh, two years now uh, for two years now we have 100% of our vineyard with with cover crops. So of course we have to manage it. We have to un uh, understand what we are we are doing. Uh, the big risk it is to have a competition with our, our vines. But if you manage uh, your cover crop at the best, uh, cutting it, uh, uh, get down it uh, with a rouleau and everything. Uh, at, the, at the right moment, you 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 you, you have a very very interesting uh, uh, result uh, result uh, and for the uh, you, on the humidity of the soil, so it's quite, uh, quite interesting. And of course, all the food and the nutrients uh, uh, support that uh, your vine could uh, could have at the end. We have started agroforestry uh, four years ago. We have planted more than 2,000 plant, uh, trees in, in our inside our plots. Of course, we have started at the beginning around our, our, in, uh, our plots, but now we have, plant, we have uh, the majority of plots with trees inside. We have planted the half of fruit trees and uh, an half of uh, forest trees. So at the same, we had to choose the, the species of trees which are um, the most adapted and, and for forest trees it was a, a bit uh, the challenge because uh, we, we couldn't plant the same uh, forest trees than in, in Cheval Blanc for example so we had worked with um, with the INTA which is a uh, equivalent equivalency of the INRA in France uh, to, to find the best species uh, and most adapted species to be planted in the vineyard 
and which has not a, a big consumption of water, uh, which was a, a, one of the key points we, we wanted. So we have, we have planted some être doré, uh, some uh, murier sauvage, which are considering as, as forest trees. And of course, some fruit trees, um, almendras, pistachios, uh, apricots, and lots of different, uh, because we want to come back to the polyculture, which is one of our, of our objective here in Mendoza, uh, in Cheval des Andes, and of course in Cheval Blanc in Bordeaux. And on the last, on the, the photo, picture you have at the bottom, um, you have uh, what um, our own uh, BRF, so we use uh, all the uh, the, uh, the, the our tem timber prune timber, um, and this it is a very useful for um, at the end um, we put it uh, on on around the, our trees to 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 give some uh, to to keep some humidity to give some uh, nutrients, and so it's quite uh, sustainable too. Uh, and we do it uh, every year. We have a, a special place where we we uh, we try to to uh, produce it and, and then we could use it in, it in, in our vineyard. And of course, just a few words, uh, of course not because we have the climate and uh, the conditions to do it and to ask for a certification, uh, which is uh, uh, more difficult in Bordeaux, for example. Uh, we are 100% uh, well, of our vineyard is organic and certified uh, organic, uh, which uh, was uh, one of our uh, not for a priority, but uh, uh, for us, it, it was a, uh, uh, it could, it was a, a bit logical with uh, Mendoza climate conditions. When you have uh, the, this type of uh, conditions, you could uh, pass for certification and, and, and show that uh, you respect uh, at the best uh, and you understand where you are. So our adaptation, the adaptation of, of this philosophy and the Cheval Blanc philosophy, for, 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 of course, depends on the climate conditions and what availability we have. For this, for us, it's quite a, uh, the way we are thinking every day. Uh, and uh, I hope it's, uh, it's quite clear for you. So I'll finish. I know that Jean-Marc uh, and Antoine will be maybe more precise in uh, vit uh, re regenerative viticulture and there are maybe more specialists. Now we are learning every year. We start to be some local specialists, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure you will, have, you will learn more things with, uh, with them. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald. Over to you, Jean-Marc and Antoine. Okay. Hello, everybody. Happy to be with you. So I'm uh, Jean-Marc Lafage from Domaine Lafage. Uh, just uh, just a short uh, story. I'm the seventh generation, and uh, I'm coming from uh, so from the Roussillon, from the Mori Mori place. And uh, as you was saying before, I've been traveling and making wine in different many countries. Uh, some of them very badly affected also by some drought. And uh, and since uh, the 2000, I started to uh, I started the domaine d'affage to make. Uh, to change a little bit uh, the way of the business. My father, grandfather, grand grandfather, I used to make fortified wines, used to sell to uh, big negotiant people. And uh, when I arrived uh, back in uh, the estate with Zelian, we decided to make uh, to make some uh, red and white and rosé table wine, uh, and for sure some uh, some fortified wines because it was part of our DNA. Uh, for the last 20 years, we've maybe been suffering of about uh, about uh, drought of, I don't know, maybe one year, every three or four years. And um, in, 2000, uh, in 2020, we decided to, uh, to uh, have a part of the company uh, making some work, some uh, studies with, uh, with Antoine, who is uh, next to me. And uh, Antoine was at that time working in, uh, in Australia. Uh, working in uh, even worse conditions than what we were knowing and having in, uh, in the Roussillon. But uh, I think we had, uh, and that was maybe the best idea of, uh, of the, the estate for the last 10 years because the, the condition went uh, more and more difficult since 2021. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, as you can see, we were used to have uh, one uh, five, 570 uh, millimeters 
on the last, uh, I think, 100, 100 years or, yeah. From, from 2010 to... Yeah, from 2010, from 2010 to 2023. So, but the average uh, annual rainfall were about 570 millimeters for the last 100 years, more or less. In 2021, we've got uh, 358 millimeters, which uh, in our condition is really, really difficult because 80% of the vineyard from the Roussillon is dry warm. So 358 is uh, is very very few, and uh, and the and the plant is uh, suffering much. Uh, 2022 was uh, 360, so quite the same. 2021 was maybe a bit better because it was uh, cooler. It was a cooler year than uh, than the previous years. So it was the vineyard was not so badly affected, and we were quite amazed to see the. The vineyard doing so well, which uh, such a uh, small quantity of water. 2022 was an, another difficult year, but uh, uh, in this uh, in this um, in this uh, uh, screen in this shot, yeah. we we cannot see. Um, we can see the year, but we cannot see when we have the when we have when we get the rainfall. And what we've seen is uh, when we get the rainfall in uh, March, April, May, even a small quantity can save can save the crop. So it's uh, it's maybe uh, not good for the uh, uh, nap phreatic phreatic nappers for the for the underground river. But for the vineyard, if you get water between April to uh, March, April to May, you can save the, the vineyard. So 2022 was nice. 2023 has been a disaster with uh, a rain of 240 millimeters. It's more or less the rain, uh, as, I, as we could see before, the rain they have in Mendoza, but it's also the rain they have in Jordania or the rain they have in Marrakech. And uh, I can tell you, I used to go to Marrakech, and I cannot see many vineyards around. And uh, it's a very so we are we are actually suffering very very much of the dry seasons. And uh, what we decided to do with uh, with Antoine and uh, people in charge of the viticulture, of the viticulture and Doreen Lafage is to uh, to try to make uh, the water more efficient. And at the end, we were thinking that. Uh, the best way we can do maybe is to, to cultivate water before cultivate water before cultivate vines, and uh, we start thinking about uh, how to make our soil more resilient uh, with a better water retention, but also how to make our irrigation more efficient. And uh, we've been doing some trials. We will see after in details with uh, Antoine, which uh, was as a result was. Uh, in the Roussillon, uh, just having uh, around uh, 400 or 300 to 400 uh, cubic meters per hectare per year uh, can save the can save the crop. Which uh, we are in the Roussillon. Uh, our target is about four to five tons per hectare with uh, 300 to 400 cubic meters. Even with the 240 millimeters per year, we show. That uh, that uh, we can have a, oh, I would say a okay crop, not a fantastic crop, but uh, we can still have uh, some wines. After after seeing that, we can uh, we can see this graph, which uh, is from the eighties to now, and we can see that uh, when in the past we were having. Um, around 11% uh, volume alcohol in the 80s. Now we have the now we have nearly 14, even more than 14% volume alcohol. We can also see the pH going up from uh, 3.5 to 3.7. You have to think uh, even more than 3.7. You have to think that the 0.1 is exponential, so it's a big, big drop of acidity going from 3.5. To 3.7, and uh, the uh, total acidity was around, I would say, uh, four grams per liter in uh, in the 80s, 1890s, and now we are nearly three grams per liter, which is uh, I don't want to say disaster, but uh, it's, uh, it's quite damaging the quality. Knowing that uh, for having a very good quality of wine, we need a good acidity and a good uh, 
acidity coming from the vinyl is always better than uh, added acidity. So we are. Uh, well, so we are. Uh, <coughs> We did uh, three main, uh, for the experiment, we did uh, three main topics, uh, water cultivation, uh, biodiversity, and uh, carbon. And the idea overall was to make uh, the soil more resilient, thinking that uh, if we have a better water retention in our soil, uh, the plant will grow better, and if the plant grows better, we probably have a better, better grapes. Uh, we are doing uh, this experiment. I, as a producer, I wanted to make an experiment we can really follow and kill the winery, and, and not just um, and not uh, just crushing a uh, ten kilo or twenty or twenty kilo of, uh, of grapes. Uh, I wanted to do like uh, one a minimum one barrel, but if we could have done one thing was better. So we decided to make all the experiments on uh, forty hectares uh, of. Um, the driest area of the Roussillon, but in this place, maybe uh, is the location of 70% uh, of the total Roussillon vineyards, not just our vineyard, but it's very well, very well located to uh, have some numbers that we can share with all our neighbors to, uh, to make our, our viticulture surviving, I would say. Uh, we are doing uh, all these uh, all these studies with uh, experts with a professor from the University of Montpellier, some contact with the University of Adelaide, some uh, private companies from the School of Agronomy of Montpellier, private laboratories. We did uh, more than 15,000 analyses uh, on the last uh, three years, and we spent a little bit of money. Um, what uh, we could say, is um, for about uh, water cultivation. Uh, so we did that for, for the three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023. And uh, the strategy was based on uh, what needs the plant, uh, what is the soil, uh, soil humidity, and uh, what is the atmospheric demand, knowing that in the Roussillon we have a very, very big wind, which is a bit like uh, the Mistral in Côte d'Iron. We have the Tramontana, Tramontana in, uh, in the Roussillon, which is a wind coming from northwest, uh, very, uh, very, very dry, which is affecting much the evapotranspiration. Um, okay. So okay. for the research and investigation, I will let uh, I will let uh, Antoine tell you what we are what we're doing. Yeah, hello, hello everyone. Um, so thanks to this uh, this strategy. Um, that, as Jean-Marc said, uh, is based on three different compartments. So first, what the plant needs with the pressure chamber, like they were doing in, in Mendoza just before, explaining. Also based on the soil humidity, but also a very precise knowing of the root architectures. Um, for that, uh, for example, with the probes, we know, uh, for example, that we have a, a root zone of uh, a, a root exploration of 60 centimeter deep. We put a capacitive props until these depths, and so we can uh, follow the uh, when is the irrigation uh, reaching these depths, so that we stop irrigation at this moment and it does not go uh, uh, um, deeper, and so it's water saved. Also on the atmospheric demand, so I saw before on the chat that there were a question on BPD. This is something that we are following, but also the the. Um, the global evapotranspiration um, calculation. And so with uh, a mix of all this knowledge, this data, uh, we are able to irrigate only uh, 500 cubic meters. So that was the case for last year. But usually, if we have a sufficient amount of rain during the winter, before the bird burst, we can even use only 300 cubic meters, which is more than three times less the amount of irrigation that is used uh, usually in the long dock. You have uh, uh, on the on the right part of the of the slide a comparison with a different irrigation strategy. We are the, the green one. So this is what is done usually 1000 cubic meter. And this is what is done in uh, other part of the world, the uh, intensive viticulture, also knowing that the, the the objective of production are different. Uh, there, there is more yield per hectare. Here we are really doing a conservation irrigation, just 
let's say maybe to just to save the, the, the vineyard and ensure uh, enough yield for economic uh, um, insurance. The result we have is that we maintained uh, the yield, uh, as I said, as, as a good economic point, the berry volume, which is good for the quality of the, of the wine then. Uh, we have more resilience of the vines uh, year after year because we have better bird burst of the vines the year after the, the irrigation. Of course, we decrease hydric stress. We have better water use efficiency because even though we uh, irrigated only uh, 500 cubic meter, we did it following different strategies. One was uh, with more supply, but of less hours. The other one was with less supply, but of more hours. And from these, one of the strategy was better in terms of quantity of grapes per hectare, but also quality. And um, so the one that was good was just uh, low supply of irrigation that allows us to have uh, a very good replicability of the strategy and uh, so that we can share it very easily with the neighbors, uh, as was saying Jean-Marc. Irrigation at Domaine Lafage is only 50% of the overall uh, land. Um, it means that we have also to find solution uh, without irrigation. And um, even though we, we would like to have more irrigation, this is not possible because there is a, a very um, strong competition on uh, water resources on the Roussillon. And the priority, of course, is for, um, is for the uh, human consumption. Agriculture is not the priority. So we try to find other solutions. Biochar is one of them. So biochar, is a, as it's written, it's full, almost full of carbon. It's a material that is 80% carbon and that is very light, very porous. When we have a, a piece of, oh, it's, it's like a charcoal, so, but from bio source, from bio origin. So this is why it is called biochar. And when you hold the biochar in your hand, it takes place. It's, uh, it has a certain volume, but it's very light. And so it means that inside of it, there is um, a huge number of pores. Uh, it's very porous. And in these pores, we can store water. So, and nutrients also. So what we do is, is that we mix it with compost so that it first it uh, increases its water holding capacity because of different uh, reaction at the surface, but I won't go into details. It stores, it loads it with uh, nutrients and with water for the, for the compost as well, because compost uh, at the middle of its, uh, its uh, production, it's very humid. So we take this humidity from the compost or so. From these results, uh, from, from this biochar compost, we applied it into in different vines. And we saw on average that we uh, saved 180 cubic meter of water. Um, so in this context of water cultivation, this is a very big result. We are very happy with this one. And it gives us a, a very good hope for the use of biochar. We had two times more water retention in the soil. And we think we can go further because this year uh, we increased the amount of biochar into our mix. So we think we can reach until four times more water retention in the soil. We add for, um, we compared vines where we applied biochar with irrigation versus vines uh, without biochar, but with irrigation. And for the same amount of irrigation, we add 45% more vegetative growth. I only speak of vegetative growth because it's um, a plantation of the year. It's not already producing vines, old vines, it's baby vines. And so we are just monitoring vegetative growth. That is very uh, important, the vegetative growth in the first years of the, of the, of the plantation to ensure a good, um, a good overall life of the vineyard then. We increased by 60% the soil organic matter of the, um, of, the, of, the, of the soil, which is very, very important to store water. And we had better alcoholic fermentation in the way that we increased the, the yeast assimilable nitrogen into the nest. We went from a, 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 a 
120 milligram per liter of, ye uh, of yeast assimilable nitrogen, 280. So we were lacking nitrogen a lot in the mess, and now it's enough. This is all for biochar. I continue with another solution. Oh, no, these photos, uh, they are very interesting. So here on the uh, on this one, it's um, the control with irrigation. So no, no biochar, but with irrigation. Here is biochar plus irrigation. There is no uh, no irrigation at all. There is a pipe, but it, there is no holes into it. You can you can trust me on that. So no irrigation and no biochar. And here is biochar and no irrigation. And here on the left, it's uh, this one and this one. So here is uh, no irrigation with biochar, and here is uh, no irrigation, no biochar. So it speaks of itself, the photos. Cover crops, we are doing a lot of uh, research into that. So as it was said before, there are different uh, um, um, agronomic uh, benefits for, for cover crops. We were very interested into um, its impact on uh, physical fertility of the soil and uh, especially its uh, ability to increase infiltration. Here, when it's raining, it's uh, raining heavily. Uh, Jean-Marc just said before, it's raining less than usual, but when it rains, it rains heavily. It's thunderstorms, and so we have 50 millimeters rain uh, within one hour. We have runoff. We have uh, erosion of the soil, so we want to avoid that. And we saw uh, cover crops, but in a way uh, that we wanted also to avoid competition, competition for water and nutrients during uh, the spring and the vegetative season for the vines. So we divided by three the amount of cover of um, of seeds that we sow per hectare usually to have still the good impact on water infiltration without the hydric stress. And the results are here. We increased by almost two, the, by more than two, the water infiltration. 44% the berry weight, so the yield, final yield per hectare. And we uh, decreased of uh, more than 50% the hydric stress, which is something that is uh, amazing, knowing that we have cover crops that could also increase competition. Another topic we are following, but it has been uh, done in the vineyard since uh, uh, more than 20 years now, uh, is the plantation following key lines. So key lines is when uh, you are planting uh, following the contour lines of the mountains so that the vines, the rows of the vines are always perpendicular to the slope. In this way, in this way it builds um, somehow yeah. some yeah. some terraces stairs that uh, decrease the runoff of the um, of the water we have uh, 12 hectares of uh, of vines uh, that are planted following this this concept and um, it allows us to give uh, to produce the best cuvee of the domain mainly because of this infiltration that gives uh, water to the soil and then give uh, this uh, this freshness to the wine Another topic, so all everything that I presented just now at uh, agronomical practices that we are playing with to fight drought resilience. And this one uh, is focused on vegetative material. Uh, at the domain, uh, so we have in, uh, in 2020, we had 30 uh, cultivars already. So uh, already a lot of um, biodiversity in the vegetative material. Knowing that uh, a big amount of them was Grenache and Carignan that are already very drought tolerant. They are from here, they are adapted to these uh, conditions, but we want to uh, try others that are either uh, we call drought tolerant, so they will, uh, for the same amount of sugar loading, use less water, or other varieties that are. Uh, well uh, adapted or um, yeah adaptive uh, cultivars so that they will uh, decrease um, have more acidity in the end so it's a good blend for 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 the winemaking area then or they load less sugar and we are also working with a 
This is resistant varieties, but this is not the topic. And our objective is to check all these, uh, these varieties in our Mediterranean context, checking their maturity behavior, water use efficiency in the context of water cultivation. I think I think uh, this one is a big point because, uh, as I was saying uh, before, we have a less and less activity, and uh, maybe having a few uh, a few um, vinifera like uh, pitbull noir has a very high acidity, like uh, pitbull like uh, the pitbull white. Uh, maybe having uh, some uh, some chenin, some petit mansin can can help in a, in a, in a proportion in a small proportion uh, in balancing our wine. And having a, and because of the DNA of the, of the spaghetti being so acidic, that could be maybe helpful in a, in some way in the future. Maybe not changing a 100% is not the point, but maybe having a 10% of some of the spaghetti will be helping much uh, our blends and uh, overall our, our wines on long term uh, aging. Um, this is not really the topic of cultivating, wa cultivating water, but we think it can help. Uh, uh, it will take time, but it will in install a good um, agronomical ecosystem at the vineyard that will help the vines to be more resilient to drought. We are now uh, the first estate in France to be certified regenerative viticulture. So it means uh, no uh, disturbance of the soil by no tilling. Uh, use of cover crops, use of uh, animals to uh, to um, um, mow the, the, the crops, um, bats and chickadees to eat the insects, uh, only use of natural products to fight against uh, disease that are downy and powdery mildew here, um, organic, um, organic fertilization with compost and biochar, and so um, yeah, we are very happy with this project and we think in the end, it will take time to have more results and more accurate data that help to, to fight climate change also. Uh, from the results, the very strong results we had with the first uh, experiments I showed you, the conservation irrigation and the second one with the biochar, we built a, a big pro uh, research project that we presented to the French government. Um, and we want to uh, mix them, the conservation and ir irrigation and the biochar on different terroirs that we have vines uh, on. And uh, we have different um, interns working on the, the project, following data uh, every day with uh, pressure chambers, soil, vegetative materials, uh, atmospheric data. And um, at the end, yeah, the idea is uh, still to, to um, deploy the good results we had in Masmutu, the driest area of the region, to other area to continue this, uh, this, proof, this proof of concept, this agronomical proof, proof of concept. I will say that uh, we didn't have a much uh, choice in, uh, in doing uh, research in uh, the Roussillon because uh, we are really struggling with uh, the bloody condition. We are now happy because we just got 140 millimeters the last month, but uh, it, uh, we don't know if it will happen again. You know, it's always uh, always difficult. The government has a very very big pressure because all the producers are asking for water, but in a way they cannot give the water to all of us. And uh, but uh, they they want to give uh, they could give water to all of us if we are able able to show them that uh, we are working not just on the water compartment. But working also with uh, compost, uh, this year in Domaine Lafage, we made uh, nearly 4,000 tons of application of compost. Uh, we do uh, a few hundred tons of uh, biochar. And uh, we are doing uh, the water of, of conservation. When we do irrigation, we do underground ir irrigation to avoid evaporation. And uh, also to avoid having too much grass on the, on the, near the vine, uh, taking out the water. And uh, is uh, uh, working on key line. When we uh, when we plant the vineyard, we plant east west, you know, to have less insulation. So we're doing uh, as much. Uh, it's not just the water, not water. It's many tools which uh, help in having a less transpiration and uh, and better result. 
What uh, I was uh, amazed is uh, this concept of Yosha is really interesting people. We had many people from Burgundy and from Champagne who came to us to have more information. Uh, maybe uh, because of some of them today, when even in Burgundy, when they plant a vineyard, they plant a vineyard with a drip irrigation. Maybe for the two, three or four, five years before they have the deal, the AOP, I would say, and after they take out the irrigation, it's the way they work now more and more in Burgundy. And uh, actually, maybe having a, having a biochar, a biochar uh, uh, fertilization with uh, co compost, with, uh, with some organic matter, will help uh, them not having, not needing uh, this, uh, this irrigation, which uh, they have to take out after two or three years. So, we are, uh, even if the conditions are really different, and uh, I don't know if uh, some of you, they know the French condition now, uh, in many, many, I would say 90% of France, we have flowers, flowers and flowers, it's been a disaster. Uh, and we are just the uh, only, uh, only place, uh, a bit like uh, Asterix and Obelix, you know, uh, we are the only place with our flag, with uh, trying, to, uh, trying to fight against uh, Against this, uh, this very very dry dry uh, dry period dry season, where uh, we include ourselves and uh, all the Spain side until Tarragona until Priorato Priorato places, and uh, actually I think the government is following us because it's a it's a feeling that in maybe in a few decades or, or even before uh, we could have the same problems in other places in France. And I think today we are we are a good laboratory for for them. So that, that was a bit of conclusion. Uh, thank you so much, and um, thank you everybody for listening. And I hope we'll be able to follow more of what is being done at the Cheval des Andes and at the Men Lafarge in the future. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you.